Good morning again, everyone, and, and thanks for waiting on us. Senator, the Honorable Paula Gopi Schoon, Minister of Trade and Industry. The Honorable Ayanna Webster Roy, Minister of State in the Office of the Prime Minister, Gender and Child Affairs. Ms. Pamela Koch Hamilton, Executive Director, International Trade Center. Mr. Ashmir Mohammed, Chairman Export TT. Ms. Franca Costello, President, Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association, TTMA. Ms. Joanne Salazar, President, International Women's Forum, Trinidad and Tobago. Specially invited guests, female entrepreneurs, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and a very, very warm welcome to everyone. I am Stacey Adams, Director, Export TT, and your moderator for today's launch of the She Trades Initiative in Trinidad and Tobago. It's a beautiful sunny morning here in Port of Spain, Trinidad, as we welcome our dignitaries and the scores of participants already tuned in for the virtual launch of an initiative which we know will be a transformational one for women-owned businesses, women exporters, and entrepreneurs in Trinidad and Tobago. Today's launch takes place under the theme the role of the female entrepreneur in COVID-19 recovery. I suspect that like me, you are all eager to learn more about the She Trades, she Trades project and what it can mean for your business and the overall economic empowerment of women. Allow me to start by acknowledging the Ministry of Trade and Industry, which is hosting this launch in collaboration with the International Trade Center. We have a tight and very interesting program ahead which will flow according to the following agenda. We will start with opening remarks from the chairman of Export TT, Mr. Ashmir Mohammed. Export TT is the National Export Facilitation Organization of Trinidad and Tobago, charged with generating export growth and diversification in the non-energy goods and services sectors. We will then hear from Ms. Pamela Cook Hamilton, Executive Director, International Trade Center, ITC, the ITC is a joint agency of the United Nations and the World Trade Organization and is the only development agency that is fully dedicated to supporting the internationalization of small and medium-sized enterprises. Opening remarks will also be delivered by Trinidad and Tobago's Minister of Trade and Industry, Senator the Honorable Paula Gopi Schoon. We look forward to their contributions as we learn more about the She Trades program and its potential to empower our businesswomen. After our opening remarks, we move into our panel discussion. For that segment, Senator Gopi Schoon and Ms. Pamela Cook Hamilton will be joined by the Honorable, Minute, Honorable Ayanna Webster Roy, Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, Gender and Child Affairs, Ms. Franca Costello, President of TTMA, and Ms. Joanne Salazar, President of the Trinidad Tobago Chapter of the International Women's Forum. We will close off today's launch with the signing of an MOU between the International Trade Center and Export TT Limited. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Ashmir Mohammed, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Export TT Limited. Mr. Mohammed is also the Director and the Corporate Secretary of Casey Confectionery Limited and has 30 years of experience in international marketing. He is currently the Deputy Chairman of the Committee of the Valuation of Intellectual Property Office and is also the past President of the Kuva Point Lisas Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Mr. Mohammed, and good morning. Export TT is delighted to be involved in the establishment of Trinidad and Tobago's very own She Trade Hub. In doing so, we, bec we become the first in the Caribbean to join 25 other countries where She Trades has a presence through country projects and national hubs like the ones we are about to launch today. She Trades is an initiative of the International Trade Center, which aims on stop shop for women-owned business, businesses to connect to a diverse range of organizations, develop strong networks. It is indeed comforting to know that you are not going through the numerous challenges with which women encounter in starting, growing, and managing their business, businesses alone. Having a network of people which you can tap into for advice, support, and motivation is an immeasurable asset. Goal two of team four of Trinidad and Tobago's national development strategy 
speaks to a business environment that is conducive to entrepreneurship. The she trade the Sea Trades Initiative contributes to the strengthening of our, of our entrepreneurship development systems as it offers the culture and an environment where the ideas of female entrepreneurs are properly supported. Our local female entrepreneurs will be able to offer and source products and services, learn new skills through a wide range of free e-learning materials, and participate in workshops, trade fairs, and other business events. This initiative aligns with Export TT's client management system, which seeks to assess our clients and develop unique support plans based on their specific needs. These plans are designed to take them through a process of improvements in production, meeting international standards, and eventually entry into foreign markets. Our CRM software allows us to tag our female entrepreneurs to follow their progress and lend support where required. We have no doubts that the She Trades Hub will be extremely beneficial to the 267 women-owned businesses from Trinidad and Tobago, which have registered on the platform, and the 64 which have completed the needs assessment. Our organization, which comprises over 70% female employees, looks forward to working with our female entrepreneurs to increase their visibility globally and their contribution to Trinidad and Tobago's non-energy exports. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mohammed. I know that Export TT is honored to be the executing agency for this initiative. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce Ms. Pamela Cook Hamilton, Executive Director of the International Trade Center. Ms. Pamela Cook Hamilton has served as Executive Director of the International Trade Center since October 1st, 2020. She joined the ITC from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, where she was Director of the Division on International Trade and Commodities. Ms. Coke Hamilton has a breadth of experience and expertise in trade-related capacity building and sustainable development. She served with the Jamaican government, the Caribbean Forum in Trade Negotiations, and the multilateral institutions, including the Organization of American States and the Inter-American Development Bank. She previously served as Executive Director of the Caribbean of, of the Caribbean Export Development Agency, strengthening the private sector and micro, small, and medium enterprises through investment promotion. She has a deep understanding of the challenges faced by vulnerable economies, such as the small island developing states and least developed countries. Ms. Coke Hamilton has worked extensively with private sector across African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries and academia to build trade-related institutional strength within member states. She also established the Women Empowered Through Export, Wexport platform to address the disadvantages that women-owned firms experience in accessing, in accessing markets. Ms. Coke Hamilton holds a Juris Doctor in Law from the Georgetown University School of Law in Washington, DC, and a PSC in International Relations and Economics from the University of the West Indies, Kingston, Jamaica. Welcome and a good morning to you, Ms. Cook Hamilton. Welcome to the launch of the She Trades Hub in Trinidad and Tobago. The Caribbean is particularly close to my heart, of course. <laughs> and I even wore my red, you know, to try to, but then I have a red background, so I'm kind of blending, but it's okay. This is the red for Trinidad. Um, <laughs> but I'm delighted to be here with you as we work together to empower women in Trinidad and Tobago a country that has shown considerable political will and commitment to women's empowerment. Trinidad and Tobago outperforms the region in several gender-specific indicators of progress under the Global Sustainable Development Goals. And of course, as a Jamaican, it takes me a lot to say that. <laughs> but, but of course, we, we know it is true. You are also among the first 25 countries to build the data set for the ITC's recently launched She Trades Outlook policy tool, which captures new trade and gender data to better inform policy and program formulation to support women in business. It was through She Trades Outlook that we confirmed that the legal and regulatory framework and trade policies are two areas where Trinidad and Tobago is performing well in terms of promoting women's rights and women's entry into the labor force. 
With this high level of momentum and action, it is no surprise that Trinidad and Tobago will be the first in the region to host a She Trades Hub. Congratulations. As we know, COVID-19 is having a more severe impact on women as workers, as consumers, as farmers, as researchers, as caregivers, and also as business owners. Today, we are here to see how we can partner to support this last segment, women-owned businesses. Women-owned businesses are on average smaller in size, they're present in less productive sectors, and are less resistant to economic shocks. They're also concentrated in sectors that are hard hit by crises, including tourism, catering, entertainment, and retail. Women are seven times more likely to work in a sector that has been shut down since the current health crisis began. We see this, for example, in the tourism sector, where the female labor force in some Caribbean countries constitutes up to 70% of total employment in the sector. Gender-specific support and targeted approaches can ensure that existing gender inequalities are not further exacerbated and that women are actually able to take advantage of new opportunities, including e-commerce, gender lens investing, gaining control of productive resources, and benefiting from increased agency. For these various reasons, the establishment of the She Trades Hub in Trinidad and Tobago is very timely. ITC's flagship She Trades initiative is a direct response to the SDG 5 aimed at achieving gender equality. Through She Trades, ITC and our partners are committed to connecting 3 million women to markets by 2021. We count on the She Trades Hub in Trinidad and Tobago to help us to get, get to and even surpass this 3 million target. Doing this together means ITC's continued support to Export TT and the government of Trinidad and Tobago as jointly we ensure that Trinidadian women entrepreneurs have ready access to and are equipped with the skills and knowledge they need to emerge and recover from the crisis. They will also benefit from access to information about shifting dynamics in demand and global supply chains and other market information. Women will also have access to the She Trades online platform, which will open opportunities for networking, learning through the virtual learning space, and connections to online buyers. They will also benefit from capacity building activities specifically designed to address their needs. The work has already begun, and I already mentioned the collaboration under the She Trades Outlook. Additionally, under an EU funded Caribbean coconut industry project, we have been exploring through discussions with the Ministry of Trade and Export TT how to replicate the success we have had in the Dominican Republic with the Association of Women in Action of setting up micro enterprise that produces and sells high quality coconut oil, supporting over 5,000 producers. We're off to a good start, but there's more to do. I look forward to seeing this hub succeed and I'm looking forward to this panel discussion to further flesh out new ideas of what that would look like for Trinidad and Tobago. I'm also looking forward to visiting Trinidad and Tobago as soon as you open your borders. <laughs> I've been trying to get there for the last six months, but eventually I hope the Prime Minister will have mercy on us. Um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Coke Hamilton. We do appreciate the partnership with the International Trade Center in rolling out this program and the excellent inroads She Trades has been making globally. You have our commitment to assist the IFC in exceeding the target as outlined in your presentation. Our next speaker to deliver opening remarks will be Senator the Honorable Paula Gopi Schoon, Minister of Trade and Industry. Senator the Honorable Paula Gopi Schoon was reappointed Minister of Trade and Industry on August 19th, 2020. She has been a member of parliament since 2007 and previously served as Minister of Foreign Affairs. In her second term as Minister of Trade and Industry, she aims to continue building upon and expanding programs initiated in the last five years in an effort to improve the export capacity of the local manufacturing sector and position Trinidad and Tobago as the business and trade hub of the Caribbean. She will also continue to lead the charge towards stimulating domestic and foreign investments while implementing policies to enhance the global competitiveness of Trinidad and Tobago. She believes in continuous stakeholder engagement to ensure participation in the growth and development of all sectors for a sustainable and vibrant economy. It gives me great pleasure to hand over to Minister Gopi School. Thank you very much, Stacey. And um, let me recognize my colleague, the Honorable 
Ayanna Webster Roy, Minister of State in the Office of the Prime Minister, and having, and having responsibility for gender and child affairs. Mrs. Pamela Coke Hamilton, who's wearing red for us today. My staff told me, do not wear red. <laughs> <laughs> Executive Director of in the ITC International Trade Center, Mr. Ashmi Mohammed, Chairman of Export TT, Ms. Franca Costello, the President of the uh, Manufacturers Association, Joanne Salazar, President of the International Women's Forum for Trinidad and Tobago, Specially invited guests, the female entrepreneurs. We now have more than 280 participants looking on at this time. Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, all, and a pleasant good morning to participants in Trinidad and Tobago. And a special good afternoon to our guests joining us from the International Trade Center in Geneva. I take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to the official launch of the She Trades Hub of Trinidad and Tobago. Today we conference under extraordinary circumstances, but it is such a proud moment for Trinidad and Tobago as we have the honor of being the first country in the Caribbean to officially launch a She Trades Hub. Trinidad and Tobago is now part of a community of over 25 countries working towards connecting over 3 million women entrepreneurs to global markets by 2021. It's a movement. She Trades provides a pathway for business expansion enabling Trinidad and Tobago's female entrepreneurs to receive technical training, professional mentorship, compete in international tenders and procurement processes, and attend international trade and business events. It also encourages engagement among female-owned businesses on online forums to exchange ideas, experiences, and to collaborate to develop solutions to overcome challenges often faced by women in business. This transformative platform offers invaluable opportunities for Trinidad and Tobago female-owned MSMEs, as it promotes their inclusion into global supply chains, facilitates business-to-business -business and business-to-consumer linkages, and provides an income-earning avenue for our enterprising women. Locally, we can boast that female-owned businesses exist in almost every sector and industry. And this platform will offer an international trade gateway for these entrepreneurs granting access to a market of approximately 2.7 billion persons across 25 territories at this time. And this initiative is beneficial and unique as it aims to foster change by going beyond the traditional approach of merely, of merely improving the quality of women's products and services. Instead, it sets out to engage all actors involved in women's economic empowerment, including governments, the private sector, and civil society. In developing our She Trades Work Program, Trinidad and Tobago and the ITC will collaborate to design strategic initiatives and activities in line with four of the seven pillars of the ITC chapter. Pillar one, championing quality data. Pillar four, striking business deals. Pillar five, enabling market access. And pillar six, unlocking financial services. We believe that these specific pillars will synergize best with our Vision 2030 National Development Policy and pivot our female entrepreneurs as drivers of Trinidad and Tobago's economic growth. The implementation of She Trades in Trinidad and Tobago falls under the remit of our National Export Promotional Agency, Export TT. And Export TT will be further supported by the Ministry of Trade and Industry and other trade related and business development agencies, such as Creative TT. The Caribbean Re uh, Kariri, as you know it, and NETCO, our National Ent Entrepreneurship Development Company Limited. This initiative is already garnering high interest and is testimony of this government's focus on developing and growing the digital economy. Since April 2020, we have seen the number of entrepreneurs registered on the She Trades platform grow daily, and, uh, and we are only at the launch stage. And these registered female-owned businesses represent a wide cross-section of sectors, including agro-processing, health and beauty, professional services, and the creative sectors. I am particularly encouraged by the response thus far, and I, uh, and I anticipate that the numbers will rise exponentially in the future. So in fact, we have today, we have about 800 persons already registered um, with she trades. So today's launch is just the beginning of a series of initiatives and activities associated with the launch, with the rollout of this hub in Trinidad and Tobago. 
And within the next two weeks, this is important, the ITC Chi Trades team will conduct an interactive workshop with our registered female business owners to maximize their use of the platform. We are currently in the needs assessment phase, which will identify the gaps and challenges faced by you, our local female, female business owners. And at this point, I want to urge those of you who are not yet registered to go online, register on SheTrades.com and complete the needs assessment. This is an instrumental part of the process. This information will be useful to develop and tailor Trinidad and Tobago's work program to best suit our needs. She Trades is not a one size fits all endeavor. And therefore, the projects and the policies which will be implemented will be in response to the gaps and challenges identified by you, the female entrepreneur. And this launch comes at an opportune time for the women of the world. Today's theme, the role of the female entrepreneur in COVID-19 recovery, is pertinent to the government's commitment to provide the necessary enabling environment, the policy interventions, and the financial mechanisms to ensure that businesses succeed and there's longevity. I therefore look forward to, to part participating in today's panel and anticipate a fruitful and enlightening conversation on the important role of female entrepreneurs in driving our COVID-19 economic recovery. In closing, I wish to especially thank all of you who worked tirelessly on today's launch, in particular, in particular the ITC staff under you, Pamela Coke Hamilton. You've worked closely with our team, including all of the members of the trade, Ministry of Trade and Industry and Export, Kitty and Simi, who has spearheaded this particular development. I also wish to acknowledge and congratulate all the female entrepreneurs who have registered for the program and are the first to be part of the Chi Trades Hub in Trinidad and Tobago. And again, I challenge others to be part of this transformative program that is set to reshape this country's trading and economic landscape. I thank you all. Thank you so much, Minister Gopi Schoon. We appreciate the support for this initiative and your drive to ensure that Trinidad and Tobago wasted no time in taking up the opportunity to launch this program to the benefit of our business women and entrepreneurs. I am certainly interested in hearing more about the program's potential and reach, especially in the context of prevailing global realities and the shifting fortunes and opportunities brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. As mentioned earlier, and for the benefit of those who may have recently joined us, for this segment, Minister Gopi Schoon and Ms. Coke Hamilton will be joined by Minister Ayanna Webster-Roy, Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with Responsibility for Gender and Child Affairs, Ms. Franca Costello, President of the TTMA, and Ms. Joanne Salazar, President of the Trinidad Tobago Chapter of the International Women's Forum. We will start with Ms. Pamela Coke Hamilton, Executive Director of the ITC. Welcome again, Ms. Coke Hamilton. Thank you. The, inter the economic crisis spurred by COVID-19 is having a devastating impact on businesses and is hitting small and medium-sized enterprises harder. From the ITC's work with SMEs, including the women-owned SMEs, what actions are needed to help the women-owned SMEs weather this crisis? And what has ITC done in this regard with its She Trades initiative? Um, thank you so much for that question. I mean, we could take a couple hours to answer it, but let me try to do it in five minutes. I think what's important to recognize is that women have been the hardest hit in terms of the COVID-19 uh, impact. Whilst SMEs have been very badly hit, women-owned enterprises have been the most devastated, simply because most tend to be in areas where, you know, services, for example, that have tended to be impacted worse, like in the tourism industry. And in addition, because they are the primary caregivers, many have had to give up uh, for homeschooling and other reasons. What has occurred is that, for example, it's been shown that 2 million women may be leaving the workforce in, in the United States alone because of COVID. So these are issues that we have to address. And what that requires is for us to pivot in terms of our she trades and engagement and offering. What we have done is one, we have shifted most of our platforms to online so that all the, the available you know, um, training programs, webinars, et cetera, all the online tools are now available for all she trades uh, registrants to be able to take part irrespective of, of whether they can travel or not because none of us can. 
The other issue that we've been looking at is enhancing the digital marketing and the business to business. So for example, one great success story we just had was that uh, Kenya, uh, Kenyan women, uh, 10 Kenyan women were able to sell uh, $2.1 million worth of avocados to Italy through a virtual trade fair, which was held just a month ago. So what we're trying to do is to shift our emphasis and shift our participation. Virtual trade fairs are happening. Let's see how we can actually get engagement through a virtual platform, but still be able to sell goods through e-commerce. So one of the issues that we also need to look at is how do we enhance uh, digital penetration? I know Trinidad is way ahead in terms of digital penetration um, at the household level, but that's going to be very important in order for women to be able to access markets through this process. The second issue is access to finance. Um, of course, women are always uh, less able to, to or at a disadvantage in terms of accessing traditional forms of finance. So what we have had is a She Trades Invest, which is an investment arm, which tries to put together women who are ready for or investment ready, and then looking for angel investors, et cetera, to invest in these, in these kinds of firms. And we can partner also with other local agencies to make that happen. We've also been working directly with companies like Maersk and UPS, as well as Etsy, eBay, PayPal, um, DHL and others to help uh, establish platforms that will enable transportation, logistics, um, that kind of thing that allows women to also lower their costs and access markets in, in that respect. So what we're trying to do actually is to see how we can address the issues that have arisen in the context of COVID and accelerate the ability to continue engagement in the market and pivot in a way that also says we recognize what the problems are, we will continue to address the needs as they have emerged, and we will try to understand what the specific ones are for Trinidad and Tobago versus Kenya or versus Djibouti. Because of course, as, as the minister said, there's no one size fits all. So um, we commit to engaging on a one-to-one -one basis in trying to assist uh, women entrepreneurs in uh, accelerating their access to markets and working with Export TT, TTMA, um, the Women's Hub, as much as possible to enhance uh, access and uh, in the file analysis to, to do business. Thanks so much, Ms. Cook Hamilton. Um, I think it's really interesting to hear of the importance and the emphasis being placed on digital solutions and online tools. Um, to help women access markets and also the she trades financing arm is is an important one for us to keep our eyes on as we move forward. I'd like to go on to Minister Gopi Schoon, uh, and who is our our very passionate champion of change who embraced the idea of implementing the she trades program here. Minister Gopi Schoon, COVID-19 has presented significant challenges for businesses globally. However, it has also provided unique opportunities for entrepreneurship through e-commerce and digitization. What measures are being developed by your government to support and promote female entrepreneurship as a viable avenue to contribute towards economic growth and recovery? Thank you very much, Stacey. And Pamela, you are right. Uh, so many commentators and organizations have addressed this question of the gender poverty gap, and so has the United Nations. And they stated that COVID-19 has really widened the gender poverty gap for females, as perhaps they are employed in sectors disproportionately impacted by the crisis and the creative industries, hospitality, the retail and food and beverage sectors. So our concern as a government is that our, our female entrepreneurs are able to thrive during this, these very difficult times. And of course, beyond the pandemic to grow by taking advantage of traditional and of new opportunities. Our government is supporting female entrepreneurship through several tools. One, enhancing access to ICT and e-commerce. And COVID-19 has demonstrated that inadequate access to ICT hinders entrepreneurship. We now know that, it's a fact. And in this regard, several initiatives have been executed to ex uh, ex extend and expand access to ICT. The rollout of access, TT centers. So access TT centers are being established throughout the country to deliver training and to provide access to e-government services 
particularly in the rural and less developed areas of our country. And the specific services that are being offered are cyber cafe facilities, ICT training and conference room facilities, e-learning through, e through free online Microsoft learning resources, access to free printing and faxing, and access to Wi-Fi launches, patios with free internet access. Our national e-commerce strategy is, also, is aimed at creating an enabling environment that facilitates and promotes e-commerce to serve the domestic and international consumer markets. So training sessions, such as how to, to take your business online, how to market your goods and services online, and the benefits of trading online, have been provided for hundreds of entrepreneurs and these in initiatives will continue as we move to encourage our female entrepreneurs to maximize the potential of the internet by reaching markets which ordinarily would have been inaccessible. The other thing, and Pamela spoke about this, the providing finance, op financing opportunities to survive in the first instance and to expand. And the government has been very deliberate in ensuring that SMEs in various sectors including manufacturing, agriculture, services, and the creative industries, are provided with targeted financial support during the pandemic. So what we've done so far is that gov there's a government-guaranteed stimulus loan pro uh, program, which is um, through the banking system, which offers 0% zero inter zero interest um, loans, and which would cover salaries, operational expenses, and the purchase of raw materials. Another 200 million has been made available to credit unions, and this is for individual and business loans. A micro enterprise grant program offering up to 20,000 TT dollars will benefit something like 5,000 micro enterprises. And a grant fund facility, which is in existence, existence that targets SMEs in various sectors, including manufacturing, agriculture, and agro-processing, financial services, maritime services, creative industries, fish and fish processing, software design applications, that's already in place. There's also a research and development program to provide, again, grant funding to support investments in new and, and advanced technology and innovation as competitiveness enhancement tools for enterprises. A 500 million TT um, agriculture stimulus program has been extended, and this will provide opportunities in agro-processing and agriculture, including nutraceuticals and, of course, pharmaceuticals. Export TT also um, offers a myriad of co-financing arrangements to assist in getting our quality goods out to traditional and non-traditional markets. The other area of focus is on enhanced capacity building for entrepreneurship. And the government has remained anchored by the fact that our citizens are our greatest asset and that they are to be given the tools necessary to enjoy a prosperous future, including several capacity building opportunities for the employed and unemployed to learn, to be trained, and to develop skills which encourage entrepreneurship. So that our Ministry of, um, of Labor, for example, and it has engaged the online learning platform, it's called Coursera, to, off, um, to offer the Commonwealth of Learning. Coursera Workforce Recovery Program is for individuals from 18 to 60 years of age who are retrenched, unemployed, or underemployed. And this program gives access to over 4,000 free online course, uh, courses in several specialized areas. Additionally, the Ministry of Community Development has multiple short courses available free of charge to educate and empower persons seeking to learn a new skill or trade. The government is also significantly expanding support to various programs which will provide targeted capacity building in the services sector and which consists of many female owned businesses. So two new export accelerating programs are on offer here in Trinidad and Tobago. They are the Services Go Global Program and the Gateway to Trade Program. So let me close here and say that my mantra, and of course you may have heard it, uh, Ms. Hamilton, on the um, on, on a pre previous ITC webinar, where I said that my mantra continues to be monetize, monetize, monetize. And this is for female entrepreneurs. And I mean, commercialize anything that you do well, ensure, ensuring, of course, that it's at the right price and it's of quality and, there's, and there are markets for it. And set, so this is providing quality goods and services for the local and international market. Monetize, monetize, monetize. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Minister. I quite like that mantra, monetize, monetize, monetize. And I think as well, the, uh, the access TT centers you mentioned and all the services that are offered free there, the training, the printing, all of those things are gonna be game changers. And so I encourage everyone to take advantage of those uh, things being offered. As we move on to our third panelist, I welcome the Honorable Ayanna Webster-Roy, Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for gender and child affairs. Minister Webster Roy first entered Parliament as the elected representative for Tobago East following the general election of September 7, 2015. On September 11, 2015, she was appointed Minister of State in the office of the Prime Minister. At present, Mrs. Webster Roy is the Minister in the office of the Prime Minister holding portfolios for Gender and Child Affairs, the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, and the Central Administration Services Tobago. Thank you so much for joining us, Minister. Minister Webster Roy, there is no doubt that COVID-19 has impacted women internationally. As the traditional homemaker, women have had to shoulder much of the burden at home as a result of the closure of school and the childcare facilities. In some cases, this has resulted in job and income loss, increased risks of domestic violence and exploitation. What policies or programs has the government developed to mitigate and support women who are facing such gender-based challenges? Thank you, Stacey. Good morning, everyone. Um, when we laid the national policy on gender and development, um, we would have identified certain key areas to focus on. And although the paper was laid as a green paper, government would have accepted the measures within the policy document as official government policy. Having said that, um, what we would have done is taken a whole of government approach to treating with issues of gender and development and issues affecting women. So although the Office of the Prime Minister is responsible for the gender and child affairs portfolio, a lot of the work and a lot of the first line response comes from the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services. Um, we would have seen in embracing that all of government approach where throughout the COVID pandemic, where the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services in collaboration with the Office of the Prime Minister through the ecclesiastical portfolio, which is held by the Prime Minister, providing food support for most of our nation's vulnerable, particularly our single parent households, as well as those um, women in vulnerable situations. I'm pleased to note that we would have opened two state-run domestic violence shelters in Trinidad and Tobago, the first of its kind. And what we would have done is provide the safe haven for those women who, especially during the period of the initial lockdown, would have been in situations of domestic violence. They had a safe haven to go to. And we provide that safe haven not only for the women, but for those women and their children and women with boy children as, as well. So that was um, one of the strategies we used to ensure that we provide a safe haven. In terms of income support and income relief, a number of different ministries would have provided assistance to those persons who would have been affected. We saw the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services providing income relief. We saw through the Ministry of Finance where persons would have received assistance as well. But beyond that, to cater for those persons who are in the entertainment industry in particular, we would have seen grants being issued out to help those who would have become more, even more vulnerable during the COVID pandemic. As we look towards the future, as we continue to build resilience in our society and we embrace all the principles laid out in the roadmap to recovery, we have been trying as a government to ensure that we work closely with the private sector and to create a policy around philanthropy so that government and private sector work together to provide opportunities for employment, to provide opportunities for support for those who become very vulnerable and we are working to establish that policy. In terms of safeguarding those who come into our space and our territory, we at the Office of the Prime Minister through our project Sarah would have worked alongside the private sector to sensitize the public and to sensitize those working in the oil industry, especially those down in the Southern Peninsula about human trafficking and especially human trafficking for sex purposes and helping to curb those incidents in our society. As a government as well, we have continued partnering with international agencies. So coming out of those partnerships, you would have seen through UN Women and through the European Union, the establishment and the operationalization 
of what we call the Spotlight Initiative to End Family Violence, where we are looking at family violence from a holistic point of view to understand it and put measures in place to curb family violence. Additionally, we would have increased our public educa education and sensitization efforts. You would have seen more messages coming across on media, not only social media, but on the television, the messages in terms of who to call if you need help. So we have ensured that throughout the pandemic and even going forward, we maintained our domestic violence hotline. We maintained our um, child support services through the Children's Authority and the hotline for the Children's Authority so that persons, children who are vulnerable, adults who are seeking information or who wish to report incidents of abuse were able to reach out and get the necessary support. But what I want to stress is the fact that we have been taking our response and our strategies and our planning from an all of government approach so that no individual, no woman is left behind. Thank you so much, Minister Webster Roy, and we appreciate the very meaningful work being done in that regard. Our next panelist is Ms. Franca Costello, President of the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association. Ms. Costello is a Director of Lifetime Roofing Limited, a full service specialty manufacturer and contractor of roofing, architectural, and structural systems. Ms. Costello sits as the chairperson of First Citizens Trustee Services Limited and is a director on several boards where she brings expertise in operational negotiations with both governmental and private financial institutions. She is as well the youngest member of the Trinidad and Tobago Manufacturers Association to hold the office of president. She is, she is also the own, she's also only the second female to head the board of directors in over six decades of the organization's existence. Ms. Costello, welcome. The government has recognized the importance of the private sector in transforming the economy. As such, a number of targeted measures have been implemented to provide more, a more enabling environment for growth and sustainability of the manufacturing sector. What plans and mechanisms have been implemented by the TTMA to promote and support private sector entrepreneurship? Okay, thank you, Stacey, very much for having the TTMA and myself to represent the manufacturing industry. I'm usually Minister Kofi Spoon for the invitation, and um, it's an honor to be here amongst all of these prestigious panelists. Hello to over 300 participants that have joined this webinar and that volume of participation is a clear indication of a strong need for information and a strong indication of the growing demand in the economy for the female entrepreneurs. We have certainly seen that women are very engrossed in the workplace, uh, and uh, I heard the statistics from Export TT and so on about how many women are working at Export TT. We at TTMA also experiences with 12 out of the 18 executive team members being women, and we're very proud that we have a very a balanced board as well. Six out of the 15 board directors are women as well, including myself. We are very focused on the SME and the entrepreneurial participation in the manufacturing realm. Uh, currently, it has uh, been widespread that we have been working hard towards uh, doubling the 2018 export figure, which was at 3.6 billion, and working towards a 7 billion projection figure. And then doing that, uh, of course, uh, a large part of that 3.6 billion is made up of our 20 top exporters. But what is interesting to recognize is that uh, of our 1,040 manufacturers in China, 890 are classified as SMEs, and that is significant. And of the SMEs, 2.1 billion is uh, participated towards our, our export bill, and that that is a phenomenal figure to recognize. SMEs and entrepreneurs are certainly our, our future, our future development for Trinidad. And a lot of these SMEs and entrepreneurs are, of course, CEO run by females or have a high female participation. COVID 19 has been a great disruptor for 2020. 
And uh, as economists have said, we as well recognize the international studies and data collection pointing to the vulnerability of women in the youth space, both in leading businesses and working with them. And that is because, of, again, as primary caregivers, so we have been disrupted by, by not being able to efficiently juggle our roles because we, we simply don't have all the support mechanisms there to allow us to, to straddle the, the caregiving roles as we used to. But also because we tend to dominate the service industries and tourism industries uh, that, um, that have been so closely disrupted. So it is inspiring to hear the Minister of Hobie School speak of such forward and progressive tools that are being put in place by the government and implemented through Expo TT. At TTMA, we are also implementing many similar programs in, in, that are working in tandem with the government. And it's great to see um, a true partnership between business and, and government happening right now. Our strategies are very aligned. We're working in sync with each other. And that means that how we are doubling our chances of success in our strategic goals. The TTMA uh, in 2020, despite COVID-19 disruptions, found ways to adapt and pivot very quickly to, to still manage our trade missions through B2B uh, digital platforms. We are hosting our TIC event right now for the first virtual TIC uh, trade show of the type in, in the Caribbean. And so I hope that everybody will take the time to visit the exhibition food spaces. We are working with our, our membership and creating business plans, marketing plans, export plans. And these, these plans are important uh, for submission to a lot of these subsidies and grants that the, the government makes available. Uh, in a lot of the applications to these subsidies and grants, uh, TTM may offer support in preparing the documentation that was needed for it. Mentorship programs, which allows us access to different uh, communities and networks that will help us as women, as entrepreneurs, men, men and women, to be able to take those next steps forward. U.S. access to the Exit Bank facility, we developed a very close relationship with Exit Bank in rolling out the U.S. dollar access that is needed in purchasing the raw materials and equipment and so on. Cocoma models in specific areas such as Guyana, where we make a tangible connection to b 2 b arrangements and training for extensive webinars that have been hosted recently. 2021 is certainly focused on the digitization platform. And we have a vision of a shared marketplace that will allow in shared costs as well for the entrepreneurs and the SMEs and allowing us to do brand promotion and in participating with our local manufacturers to uplift the TNT brand of manufactured products. We want to work with our members in, in complying with regulations and getting the correct permits and certifications that are required and helping our SMEs and our entrepreneurs take that next step forward into bolstering the domestic demand and also the export. And we look forward to working with everyone and we encourage everyone to, that is interested in taking those steps with us. To, to give us a call at TTMA and let us let's work together in, in bolstering the entire economy, our own future is raising our own standard of living as a, as a true community. Thank you so much, Mr. Stello, for those insights into the work of the TTME, and I'm sure many of us will be eager to take you up on that offer. <laughs> it's very interesting to have the efforts to advance entrepreneurship and support all the players in the manufacturing sector. We now move on to our fifth panelist, Ms. Joanne Salazar, president of the Trinidad Tobago chapter of the International Women's Forum. Mm -hmm. Ms. Joanne Salazar is currently a director, co-owner of QED Consulting Limited, her most recent position was that of Vice President of Strategy and Corporate Services in the energy sector. She has accumulated over 30 years of executive experience in finance, financial management, corporate strategy, business systems design, and process improvement. 
She is currently serving on three boards, National Flour Mills Limited, Caribbean Corporate Governance Institute, and the College of Science, Technology, and Applied Arts of Trinidad and Tobago, COSTAT. She was elected president of the Trinidad and Tobago chapter of the International Women's Forum at the end of September, where she previously served as vice president. Ms. Salazar, welcome. The COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated Trinidad and Tobago's digital transformation, requiring many businesses and consumers to transact electronically and remotely. Up and coming entrepreneurs now have to adapt to the new norm of doing business. In this regard, what advice would you give to young women who are desirous of starting a business during these unprecedented times? Well, um, good morning. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that introduction. Good morning to everyone. Um, on behalf of the Trinidad and Tobago chapter of the International Women's Forum, thank you for inviting us to participate on this panel and in the launch of this critically important and transformative initiative. The International Women's Forum is a community of 7,000 women leaders from 33 countries across six continents, focused on advancing women's leadership and championing equality worldwide. We can speak to the power of having access to powerful networks dedicated to empowering women. As the question has been framed in the context of digital transformation, we would strongly recommend that female entrepreneurs, as mentioned before, develop a very good digital marketing strategy. I think we've already heard from an earlier speaker the benefit of that. And connect with consumers on social media, not just to sell their product or service, but to genuinely engage with their customers to get them excited about their brand. With respect to the specific advice that I would give um, young women entrepreneurs, I won't touch on the, the hurdles that they'd have to encounter with regard to securing finance because that's been touched on already. But I will speak to, to three that I think are particularly important and suggest how they may be overcome. One is social stigma. Social, societal norms have taught us to expect and accept certain, certain behavioral, pattern, behavioral patterns from men and different behavioral patterns from women. However, in order to survive in the world of business, women entrepreneurs need to demonstrate a high level of competitiveness and sometimes even a fair bit of aggression. These traits are the opposite to what is traditionally ascribed to women. Our advice, as you would expect, is in the face of these attitudes, be confident, assert yourself, don't allow others' expectations to weigh you down and keep you from achieving your full potential. Success in business takes grit regardless of gender. So don't be ashamed to stand tall, particularly in the face of criticism. A second challenge is conquering the fear of failure. Some of the problems experienced by women entrepreneurs come from within as easily as they come from an external source. In other words, it's not enough to ignore the haters, and there will be plenty of them, or even to use their critique to fuel you. To become a female entrepreneur of the highest caliber, you'll need to conquer the fear of failure which ultimately comes from self-doubt. Research has shown that women are much more likely to suffer from self-doubt than men. It's completely normal, you need to know this, it's completely normal for business owners to experience anxiety and fear in the face of potential failure. But what's important is not to allow that fear to cripple your ability to succeed. We would suggest a way to avoid or mitigate this challenge would be to learn lessons from small business failure statistics. Research the common causes of failure in your market or industry and the best strategies to, pre to predict and avoid them. As Franklin Roosevelt once said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The solution is not to ignore fear, that should not be done, that's not recommended but rather to recognize that when there are justified reasons for fear and take the necessary steps to clear those hurdles. And lastly, I'd like to mention the challenge of balancing work and family. 
how to maintain domestic and family responsibilities while sim simultaneously starting and operating a new business. It's one of the most common challenges faced by female entrepreneurs. Mompreneurs have it harder than others involved in women entrepreneurship and certainly have a much more difficult time than their male counterparts. What we suggest is that though the odds are far from equal, that by no means makes business success an unreachable goal for mothers. Make a point of finding out about the amazing women who as mothers were able to establish successful businesses. They are all around you if you look. Another important action to take is to grow your network. Network, network, network. You, you are more likely to come across a new solution to an old problem than a new problem. Be prepared to learn from others and as experience is the best teacher. I would also need to add one that I added while scribbling my notes and listening to the other speakers. Investigate all the initiatives that are available to you, including initiatives like She Trades that are particularly geared and structured to advance women entrepreneurs. Thank you for allowing IWFTT to contribute to this panel discussion, and I look forward to learning more from the other contributors. I thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Salazar. I think that was very useful uh, information for all of us um, to be able to be empowered and live and work to our fullest potential. And we're moving on to the signing of the MOU between the International Trade Center and Export TT Limited. The MOU will provide the framework for cooperation between the parties to advance their shared goal of increasing the participation of women-owned businesses, women exporters, and female entrepreneurs in international trade. We now go to the team at the Ministry of Trade where Chairman of Export TT, Mr. Ashmir Mohammed, will be the first to sign on behalf of Export TT. Then we will immediately go to the IFC where its Executive Director, Pamela Cook Hamilton, will sign. I see ready. Yes, we're ready. We have our document. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Put it on. Look like Donald. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Yes. So thanks again to this. Well, it is finished. It's done. Um, we have the MOU signed. We're all raring to go. I think it's a very, very um, interesting time for us and certainly a whole lot for us to sink our teeth into and get moving. Um, I think we've started off with great momentum. Let's not lose it. Let's forge ahead. And I would like to thank um, Ms. Cook Hamilton for signing and Expo TT's chairman, Mr. Ashmir Mohammed. I want to thank all our panelists and participants for their contribution. Um, which highlighted the resilience of the female entrepreneur, the ecosystem of support around them, and the potential of the She Trades program to completely change the business trajectory of every business owner or entrepreneur who participates. Sincere thanks to those at the Ministry of Trade and Export, TT, who offered technical support, and certainly to the hundreds of persons who joined us for this launch. Please spread the word, share the good news, and let us take full advantage of this opportunity for global reach. Register your business at She Trades black backslash en. Complete the needs assessment on ITC's website. Stay tuned to Export TC's website for and Facebook page for information on an upcoming webinar showcasing offerings 
on the She Trades platform. I wish everyone a productive day. I'm so happy that I was able, I'm honored to have been able to host this. So thanks again for everyone who participated and I look forward to even greater things from the She Trades program. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you everyone. I'm excited, Thank you. look forward. All the best. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All the best. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.